Alrighty, we are going to be reviewing uh, muscles and internal structures of the mink. And uh, so we will go ahead and get going here. Let's look at the head here first. So somebody tell me, what is this round muscle here? Masseter. It's the masseter, good. And the muscle that goes up over the top of the head here? Temporal, Temporal muscle, cool. And then there are four muscles, and in my class, I am just making you learn the name of the group, but um, they come down over the top of the shoulder. This is a dividing line of that muscle group. You can see the line that goes back here and goes actually all the way down to the middle of the back. And then this whole area here, and comes it meets the temporal where we just were. And wraps around and the shape that I just drew is called a what what's the name of that shape it's a trapezoid and so that those muscles in that region are called the trapezius good um, now on the back there is a muscle that starts um, underneath the edge of the trapezius here oh and this was not as well isolated as maybe it could have been um, Here's the boundary line of the trapezius. And from here, and extending uh, this way, and wrapping around and underneath the, uh, the side of the animal, what do we call this muscle? There's an edge of it here. What's the name of this muscle here? Latissimus dorsi, good. So lateral means what? What does lateral mean? To the side and what's the dorsal surface the top. the top or the back side right so latissimus dorsi its name tells you where it is it's goes from it's on the top of the animal and it goes around the side latissimus dorsi top and side okay or back side and side of the animal and then underneath the latissimus dorsi here um, and forming the side wall of the animal What's the name of that muscle? External, external oblique. Very cool. Right. Now we're going to scoot. It's probably actually easier to move the camera than it is to move the critter. Alrighty. So, um, looking at its butt, the um, the cheek. What's the name of this butt muscle? Yes. Gluteus maximus. Yes. And then, uh, is this the side that was isolated? Yes. So the top of the thigh here and wrapping around underneath, what's the name of this muscle? The what? Sartorius. Good. Sartorius. And the back of the thigh that flexes the lower half of the leg. What's the name of this muscle here? Biceps femoris. Okay. Um, one of the reasons I chose this specimen to be the one that I kept was because uh, its lower legs still existed. Um, so the calf muscle here, what's the name of this, of this calf muscle? Gastrocnemius, good. Gastrocnemius. Um, and then the forelimb. Let's go ahead and move this again. The forelimb. There's the, um, there are two muscles here. What are the name of those two muscles? They are, they form a group. The, the what? Tricep brachii. Okay. Um, let's, let's see if we can't put this guy back together here for a minute. Put all this back in, close this back up. Okay. The muscle that, um, forms the, this triangle across his chest. That's the what? 
Pectoralis major. Okay, yeah, the major pecs. And then uh, the longer, um, uh, the longer but thinner muscle that lies underneath that and goes down triangularly towards the sternum. Pectoralis minor. So it's weird because the major takes up less real estate than the minor does. And you would think that the minor would be the smaller one. But it has to do with the thickness of the muscle, not not its length. The pectoralis minor is actually larger, but it's much thinner than the pectoralis major. And it also has to do with the amount of force that the muscle applies to the legs. The pectoralis major does more of the produces more of a force. Uh, the pectoralis minor is a supporting muscle. Okay. Um, once again, let's put all these organs back in place that were strewn about for the sake of inspection. Um, yummy. Good times. Okay. So, um, again, down here, this is another piece of what's the muscle that forms the abdominal wall? External oblique, right. Um, and then I didn't make you memorize this stripe of muscle, um, but just for your benefit, this is called the rectus abdominis. And this is the muscle that if he were a buff mink, he'd have a six pack or whatever. This is the muscle that gets all bumpy if you exercise it a lot. Um, okay, the thigh. Oh, excuse me. Your ovaries are hanging out. Okay, um, there's something I've never thought I'd say. <laughs> um, so inside the thigh, what's this big muscle on the top part? We've already named it. Sorry. Sartorius, and then the um, inside muscle of the thigh, gracilis major. Okay, um, good. So those are the muscles that I've asked you to know. I don't think I missed any of the muscles. No, I did not. Okay, so now we cut them open. And uh, we're going to start up here in the neck where your dissection began. Beautiful. Um, we, uh, we cut away, actually, the wall of muscles here. Um, and this long, bumpy tube, what is the name of this? It's the trachea. And it, it starts, if you follow the trachea all the way up, What's the name of this junction up here where it meets the mouth? The pharynx, right. The pharynx is the, is the region. Um, and then there's a particular structure that has uh, the vocal cords inside it. What am I touching right now? It starts with an L. That's the larynx. Okay. Trachea, top of the trachea is the larynx. That region is called the pharynx. Okay. Underneath the trachea, we lifted up the trachea and we sectioned it away, and there is this now flat muscular tube underneath the, tr the trachea. And what's this called? Esophagus. It's the esophagus. What goes down the esophagus? Food. Food. Bueno. Okay. Um, on either side of the trachea, as it's laying there in place, there is a bundle. Um, there's this bundle here, and there's this bundle here, and both bundles have three things in them. What do they have? Okay, one person started to say one thing and somebody said the else. So the, the artery that goes in there that's carrying blood up to the head, that's called the what? You started to say it, Sienna. Common carotid artery common carotid artery, and then, Caleb, what's the name of the vein that brings blood down from the head? The jugular. The jugular. Okay, common carotid and jugular um, are right here. They're bundled together along with a nerve, and um, the nerve is what I've got right here. It's the thinner, fibrous-looking thing. This is the nerve. 
No, not necessarily. But the common carotid and the jugular are bundled with a nerve that goes up both sides of the of the neck. Okay. Then we cut this guy open and we cracked some ribs and it was kind of grotesque or fun. Um, so when we when we get him open here, there was a gland on top that you all removed. What was the name of that gland? The thymus gland. Good. The thymus gland was on top. Um, so now we have this structure. What's this thing? The heart. All right. And I need to move my camera again. There we go. Oh, just kidding. That was not good. That's better. Okay. That's the heart. And then there are several, oops, yes, several lobes of this structure surrounding the heart. What is that? The, the what? The lungs, right. Um, how many chambers of the heart does the, this animal have? Four. Four. What, uh, they, what are they called? Close, left and right atrium, left and right ventricle, ventricle. Um, and when you pull the heart out, are the atria or the ventricle what makes it pointy on the bottom? What is that the atrium or the ventricles? Um, the ventricles? Those are the ventricles, yes. The ventricles are much larger, and then the atria are the, the chambers at the top. So blood flows in the atria, and the atria pump blood into the ventricles, and then the ventricles pump blood out to the body, right? There's a left and a right side because you have one circuit of, of rotation of blood between the heart and the lungs, and you have another circuit of rotation of blood between the heart and the rest of the body. So blood comes in. Um, one side of the heart and gets squirted out to the lungs and the lungs puts it back in the other side of the heart and it gets squirted out to the rest of the body. So that's why there's two, two of each. Uh, which side, which side, the one, the whole, which side the left of it? Uh, see now I'm, I'm doubting myself. I was going to say it comes in the left before it goes, it comes in the left, goes to the lungs, goes, then comes in the right and goes to the body. That might be switched, but I won't ask you that on the exam. Oh, okay. Um, but I should know that for some reason. I'm not, I'm, I'm not confident in my answer. Um, but when you look at the heart, the, the uh, left and right of the heart are the left and right of the animal. So it sits kind of like this. So the, um, this is the left ventricle and this is the right ventricle. And then this is the left atria and the right atria. But that that picture is looking at it from the. No, no, the one that holds is the left. Oh, okay. Am I holding it upside down? No. No. Wait. No. no. The one that holds is the right. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> okay. So then, um, the the heart was cut open, and we got to see some chambers. Um, I'm, I'm not going to ask you the names of the different valves and things of that nature, but you can see the two ventricles and you can see the right atria, the left atria was not sectioned, but you can see the different chambers. It's pretty cool. So there's the heart. Um, as we look inside the animal, can you see inside pretty well? Kind of. If I can get my stupid finger out of the way. Oh, uh, not helpful. Okay, well, um, can you see what I'm, pu what I'm pulling up right now? Is that in the camera? Okay, this is the end of the uh, vein that brings blood from the top half of the body back to the heart. What's the name of that vein? 
Yes, I heard one person say it. This is the pre cava according to your uh, dissection guide. That will be a fine, acceptable answer. Um, when I was learning anatomy, we called this the superior vena cava. Vena cava is just the word for a big cavernous vein, the big vein, right? And superior means the top half of the body. So I'll accept either answer. Um, if you go on and take classes about human anatomy, this is called the superior vena cava in humans. So either of those is fine. Superior vena cava or pre cava is fine. Um, and then the the mirror of it that brings blood up from the lower extremities got cut off, um, but I'm I'm touching it down here. Um, that thing right there brought blood up from the lower parts of the body, and you can see it on the side. If you pull all of this mess up and out of the way. Um, you can see, oh, and I didn't section it out on this guy. You can see it on its way up right there, right there. Let me see if I can get him free. There it is. So, uh, it's kind of dark down there. Um, but the, uh, What's the name of that guy that comes in from the bottom part of the body? Yep, your dissection guide for this thing called post cava. Again, in human anatomy terms, that's the inferior vena cava. So superior means top, inferior means bottom. So inferior vena cava, superior vena cava, or pre cava and post cava. Whatevers. Those will all work. Okay. Um, lungs, heart. Oh, the other, the other uh, circulatory structures that you'll need to learn. So um, it all got kind of boogered when these got pulled out, but the main flow of blood out to the rest of the body is this hole right here. What's the opening? What's that the opening to? The what? It's, it's an arch, but it's been cut in half. The aortic, the aortic arch, right? That's the opening to it. And the arch part is buried underneath this little bit of fat down here. Okay, that's the aortic arch. And it goes down and carries blood to the bottom of the body. And then it branches up. And uh, I will not make you identify because they're hard to see. But um, on this side of the body, we can probably still see it. Here I have some nerves, and here I have some vascular tissue. Can't see it. So um, there's some vascular tissue here, and it's hard to identify which one is which because your animal was not injected. But uh, one of these is the artery, and one of these is the vein going going out to the arm. Um, that actually may be it right there. Yeah, it's hard to tell. But anyway, there's a subclavian artery that goes around to the outside. I won't ask you that. But you will need to be able to identify the carotid and the artery, the aortic arch there that goes down. Okay. All right. Let's go to the abdomen. Great. Okay. Uh, what's the name of this muscle, this uh, blanket of muscle that drapes diaphragm, right? What's the purpose of the diaphragm? What does it do? It, it, separates the it separates the chest and the abdomen. What? How do you use your, your diaphragm? For breathing. For breathing, right. This thing raises and lowers, and it changes the space around the lungs and then that makes the lungs expand or contract and take breaths right so the diaphragm is the muscle is the muscle that makes you breathe right underneath the diaphragm are four lobes of this big brown organ what's that that's the liver good job and in between the right 
and the central lobe of the liver is this squishier thing and it's the same color on these guys in life it would be green that's the gallbladder right it stores bile a digestive enzyme all right um, underneath this the liver is this brown larger structure what is this whoa what is that that's the stomach that's the stomach and the stomach attaches to what tube that we've already identified? No, up here. No. The esophagus. Food comes in the mouth down the esophagus and lands in the stomach. Okay. There you go. Um, at the end of the stomach, it branches out into this twisted pile of mess. What is this thing? I will not make you identify where the three regions are, but what are the three names? Oh, duodenum, duodenum, duodenum ilium, and jejunum. Yes, <laughs> duodenum, ilium, and jejunum. Yes, and uh, there you go. In the in the first curvature of the small intestine, and this has gotten kind of torn up as we've been flipping the intestines around. But stomach, small intestine first curvature of the small intestine, there is this flat ribbon of tissue. What is that flat ribbon of tissue? Pancreas. Good. And that is the organ that um, does various other hormonal jobs, one of which is, includes making insulin, tells your body how to handle sugar. If people have diabetes, this is the organ that breaks down and stops doing its job correctly. Okay. So, um, small intestine, um, the, uh, the three um, sections of it. What do we call this connective tissue laden with fat and blood vessels? What's the name of that connective tissue that holds all of this together? It starts with an M is the general name for connective tissue. It's called mesentery. And then this particular piece of mesentery is called the lesser omentum. Lesser omentum, okay? Not sure if I'll ask you that on the exam or not, but you should be familiar with it. Greater momentum was the big pile of fat that I just ripped out of all of your specimens. So there's no greater momentum. Okay. Um, this is connected to this in life, but we separated it so we could see underneath. Um, what is this thing right here? Yeah, two names for it that came out are both fine. Colon or large intestine is fine. Okay, um, so we cut that so we can pull this guy out of the way. There is this asymmetrical organ. It's only on the left side. Spleen, good. And what's the job of the spleen? To the alcohol. No, to filter out the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's well, that the makes the drinking bar. <laughs> <laughs> to, to filter out the... the it is the largest lymph node in the body. Lymph nodes are, are where your white blood cells are made and where the immunity for disease is centered. There's lymph nodes all throughout the body, but most of them are too small to see in a dissection. Um, but this is a Mac Daddy massive lymph node, which is why people who have damaged spleens wind up having much, much higher likelihood of dying from an infection because they're, the major center of their immune system is, is damaged. So the second largest uh, lymph nodes in your body are your tonsils. Um, and there used to be a day when doctors just routinely yanked tonsils because they were keeping people from getting tonsillitis. But that's your second largest lymph node in the body. So you also are not as good at fighting general disease if you've had your, your tonsils taken out. So nowadays they don't just do that. They wait to see if your tonsils wind up being a problem um, before they have them removed. 
So pulling your pancreas aside, lifting your, your, um, your guts <laughs> out of the way, there's some vascular structures down here that we want to make sure that you have. There is this major artery that brings blood to the lower part of your body. What's this called? Uh, aortic, arch. aortic arch is at the top, and now it is down in the abdomen. So this is the abdominal, not arch, abdominal aorta. The abdominal aorta is the major artery that comes down through the bottom part of the body. Then it branches off and um, it branches off and you can in fact see it here and goes into the kidney. Oh, I just gave that away. This big structure here and this friend on the other side are the kidneys, right? Um, this part of the aortic, uh, the abdominal aorta that branches and goes into the kidney is called the something artery. Starts with an R. Oh, the, uh, the renal. renal artery. Anything having to do with a kidney is the word renal. So renal artery, okay? Um, running next to the abdominal aorta is the big blood collecting vein down here. We've already named it in this review. This is the inferior vena cava or the post cava, okay? Here it is again showing up. Um, and just like there's a renal artery, there is also a renal vein that um, I'm touching right now that brings blood back from the kidney and sends it back up into the rest of the body. Okay. Um, going down from the kidney towards the, the uh, urinary bladder is this tube. What's that? You're close. Ureter. A ureter. It, it's where urine goes, so it's the ureter. Yeah, there's a lot of U words down here, right? Um, the, the ureters converge in this structure right here. What's this? Urinary. Urinary bladder. That's the pee bag. Okay. This is a female, so... I pulled these structures out of all the fat that was around them. Um, this, these are the two sides of the what? The, the ovaries. The ovaries are around the ovaries. Human structure of this also has two branches, but they're much smaller. And in the human, we we emphasize the fact that it's one thing where the babies are grown but here in this creature it's got a branched one of these with two arms of the what it also starts with the u uterus two branches of the uterus okay so this is the left and the right arm of the uterus left and the right arms of the uterus if I ask you what is this, but otherwise, yeah, this is the uterus. There's two sides of it. And the uterus, the top of the uterus, are these structures here. These are what? Ovaries, yeah, ovaries. And the oviducts would be down in here somewhere that I, I'm not going to worry about isolating. But yes, the ovaries are at the top of the uterus. Okay. I think we have made it through. The uh, We didn't dissect the fat away from the external genitalia and I will just leave that there. Um, these are the kidneys and I had you cut the kidneys open so you could see the structures. Um, does anybody remember what the different tubes inside the kidney in here are called? I know the inner thing is like those something. Venice something. These are nephridia, these little tubes that are in here. I, I won't have that on the exam, but as long as you can identify the kidney. Um, oh, you also cut the stomach open. What do you call those ridges in the stomach? Rugae. Rugae, good. I think we've covered it all. So that is the main part of the uh, exam tomorrow. We will also be going through the structures of the frog.
but um, the frog is so much like the mink and we did so much less on it that if you know the mink, you'll be fine on the frog, okay? We've got like six minutes. Can I use a restroom? Yes. Um, just out of here.